everyone. Today I will show you how I made the crochet basketball hoop that I included in Ducky and my dual show for what it's worth. It is now late July and I filmed all this footage back at the end of May so it's been a couple of months. I feel like I completely block this part of my life out. I recorded diary style entries every day I was working on the hoop. I see now how important it is to have separation from the work. I worked on this pretty much non-stop for maybe a week and a half or so. I generally hated it <laughs> throughout. I really didn't even want to show it at the end. My friends convinced me to. It was well received, so I'm glad that I did show it. I also feel like it would have been frustrating to stare at it in my apartment after investing so much time into it. It strayed so far from my initial idea of the hoop. This is a series that I've tried to continue throughout my practice, but it feels increasingly hard to think of what's next. At this moment in my life, I've been very obsessed with crocheting, so that's the route that I took here. I'll show you all the failed attempts as well, just to show you that oftentimes the original intent doesn't play out. Come along with me on this pretty treacherous journey. I'm glad it's over and I hope you enjoy. This is the first variation of the net. You begin by measuring 12 7 foot pieces of yarn and then you attach them to the slots on the rim and gradually knot section by section, decreasing in size. I usually go beyond the length of a regulation net so I can have more surface area. And here is the final net. So this is the first crochet image I made. I decided to go with a fruit theme, thinking of a fruit basket. Get it? I counted out the stitches on one of my larger crochet images to estimate the size that I would need to fill out the diamonds in the net. And here I am applying the squares to this little blocking board. I learned about this technique recently, so I'll pin them all down and then steam them flat um, so they'll be more uniform and the edges won't curve as much. Here are the final 12 crochet images I made. All the different colorways and additional crochet square sizes. They're just safety pinned on so I can visualize. I'm saving the hoop for last because it's not really playing out how I had envisioned, so I'm basically starting from scratch. Now I have to make about 60 or so orange pom-poms. I tried the multicolor ones, but it was just a bit too messy for my liking. Just to like keep it true to an actual basketball hoop, and then I can get crazier with the crochet squares that will be applied within the net. A bit daunting, I'm not sure if I'm stoked on it, but... We've come this far, so let's just keep going. And then I need to crochet like a ton of these little white flowers for the first tier. And right now I only have one, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work. Uh, my hands hurt a lot, but I'm going to power through it and get this done. Now I'll demonstrate how to make a pom-pom. It's been maybe 15 years now since I purchased my original pom-pom maker. They were just plastic circles that you wrap the yarn around, and I saw this new variation of a pom-pom maker. Technology. <laughs> the previous ones, you have to insert the yarn through a hole, which makes it way more time consuming. So I'll tie them, and then once that's done, you pop the maker off and I'll glue the knot just to be safe. I don't want this coming apart. Here are some uncut pieces and now we will trim them down individually. I want them to be perfect so I just keep keep going. <laughs> keep cutting them down. I made 
the 60 pom-poms. Uh, it took about 24 hours to trim them all, but now I feel better now that I have them complete. But then I started applying the crochet images to the spaces in the net and it's just not looking great. Um, so last night I like tried to like, I don't know, it's hard to see. I tried to make like a spider web mock-up. Definitely rough, but looks like I can accomplish it. I don't know if that's gonna work. I think I decided to go with uh, making granny squares, which was my original idea, but I was like, maybe it's too boring, which is why I made all those image shapes. This morning I crocheted 12 of these granny squares. I have filmed some footage of making one of them, but they're pretty quick. Happy about that. I like these two because they have gaps. Because the solid image, it was just like, it felt too heavy. I still need to make a bunch more granny squares. This is just for one tier level. The next round will have to be a bit bigger. I have like a couple other size options. I'm also realizing that depending on the thickness of the yarn, although they appear very similar, you get drastically different sizes. Like, uh, these are both four levels. One, two, three, four. But you can see this one's like drastically larger, but I'm gonna sew it to the diamond shape, so it'll just stretch to fit, hopefully, if all goes well. Uh, I decided to skip on making the white flowers because it's, it's just very hard to read, and I don't think it's necessary. I might put like a couple here and there on the top and maybe use the other colorways that I already made. This morning I got up at like 6.30 and I decided to listen to a podcast with Rick Rubin. I've been obsessed with his book, The Creative Act. If, if you know me, I've probably talked your ear off about it already. But I just like needed to be reminded about it's basically like going through the process and not equating like time spent on the work to progress because through this journey, I've like already cut out one of the nets that I made. I made a bunch of things that don't quite work. So I just like needed some affirmation that this is okay. Yeah, I just like needed a reminder because this has taken so many different routes. Like I still don't know how this is gonna look, but let's try to assemble some of the pieces so we can visualize it better. I might have to redo the net all over again because this is now so yarn heavy. This is like you have to go through the full process to see what actually works and, and what you're happy with. My phone's ringing, it's, it's ducky. Just, you know, chatting about the show. <laughs> I don't know about the, the spider web. It's, it's cool in theory. Maybe I'll try to do one on like one of the higher levels. And, and just white yarn. This is just gonna be like basically collaging all the elements that I have made already to see what feels right. So yeah, let's let's get the pom-poms on just to visualize, make sure I have enough. Still have to figure out how to attach it. I think I have an idea. So yeah, let's get going. Sad, but this has to happen. I'm not sure exactly, but knotting a net can take approximately two hours. Now I'll redo it with this white sparkly string to resemble a traditional net. I think that this will lighten it up as well because it's not as thick as the yarn. I won't show you the full making here because I showed you previously with the yellow yarn. Now I'll roughly attach the pom-poms to the rim so I can see if it looks like how I want it. Here are the 12 new granny squares. This, this pattern's really simple. It's just three levels for the smaller diamonds at the bottom of the net. and I'll clip them on to visualize. Looking back now, this was actually not that bad, but I definitely hated it at the time. So a little update, the hoop 
Oh my goodness, it's strayed very far from what I had originally envisioned. Every level I complete, I am not happy with it, so I want to keep adding more. The other night, I, I thought that if install was happening Friday, I was like, I can definitely get this done. I just have to pull an all-nighter, but in reality, that wouldn't have worked. I don't know that an all-nighter is actually a possible thing for me to do, specifically with craft work, just because my hands just can't handle it. Like, regardless of whether or not my mental is there, my body just shuts down. So yeah, yesterday I finished another 12 squares, more of like a spider web pattern. I was going to individually tie in strings, to construct the spider web like I showed with the little mock-up, the wire mock-up. But it just looked bad and it would be very difficult in such a small, like it's like this big, that much space to tie so many knots. So I learned a pretty simple granny square that I had to modify to fit the shape. It's okay, I'm not stoked on it, but still it doesn't look complete to me. Now I'm just making a bunch of little flowers, which is incorporating one of the ideas I had before, not, I wouldn't say originally, just to fill out some of the negative space. So I'm doing like a bunch of similar toned little flowers. Also had to modify a pattern to get it to look like I wanted to. It's been a challenge of whether or not I even want to show it, but since I'm so close to completion, and with the small additions of the flowers, it feels like something I'd want to show. Yeah, I'm just going to keep making some flowers, but it's looking manageable at this point. My hands hurt. They like, my thumb like really like, if it's not like this, it like hurts. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep going on this. I just want it to be done. So yeah, let's finish this hoop. Now I'll crochet the spider web squares. You start by making a magic ring and crocheting out of that. It's really starting to take shape. I do love the amount of negative space here. This has four rounds and it looks pretty convincing when stretched out. Now to sew in all the ends so that there are no loose threads hanging. Back to the flowers. Again, start with a magic ring so you can cinch the flowers close tightly. In my head I want two flowers per individual string on the top of the net, so that's 24 strings times two. I need 48 of these in total. So yesterday morning, for some reason I like looked at the hoop again and I was just like, it, it doesn't feel right. It felt like, like overtly crafty. Um, don't get me wrong, like everything I do is craft. It just like wasn't reading, it wasn't making me feel any type of way. And it felt like I had just gotten to the point of where I just wanted to like finish it to finish it. So I, I was thinking about reducing the color palette to maybe make it reflect more of a net. Okay, so I started out with some white squares. Um, I did like the basic granny square pattern that I've been doing and it looked really good up against the net. The only issue here is that the negative space in these is not, it just like weighed it all down. And that was the issue I was having with the crochet images like this. It was just too dense and it wasn't really reflecting a net to me. So then I started with that and then I was like, well, let me try to make a granny square with more negative space. I settled on this kind of design. Um, I've never attempted this before. This is the first version of this. It's not that bad. Definitely more complicated. Yeah, so it looks good, but it was a little boring. So I wanted to incorporate some of the oranges that are in the like pom-poms on, on the rim. So I tried like this was next and then this one. Um, but I used 
orange in the middle that I didn't use on the rim, so I decided to scrap them. You know, this is a learning process. This is my third time redoing all the pieces. Yeah, I'm definitely very exhausted at this point. Somehow, I managed to complete everything this morning. <laughs> so, it's 24 new squares. So, yeah, today I'm gonna attach them to the net. This is just, I have so much other little, like, variables to tend to concerning the show, so I think today we just have to just do it. And I might try out the spiderweb technique on the empty net areas just to see if that helps at all or if it takes away. You really never know until you try it. Uh, take it from me. <laughs> I made 24 of these granny squares. I wanted to keep the perimeter white so that it would blend in seamlessly with the net. For this I have six of each type of orange. Yeah, see the camera's focusing and they're so cute. And they're just kind of like, I love the uniformity of them all. The smaller squares are featuring the initial granny square pattern I used. And then for the larger squares, I went with the new granny square and through a lot of trial and error, I was able to make a variety of different colorways, technically. Not not really colorways, uh, but I guess color order, because there are four rows. So I got to mix and match, and the, the one key feature was that all the edges had to be white. My favorite, because it kind of looks like a basketball. Um, but yeah, so... Pretty good. This is actually the last one I made. I'll show you how I made it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's it's kind of crazy to see like by just changing a color how like drastic it can be. Like like this is the same pattern, but they look pretty different. Or like the very early ones I did were a lot of white and like just one band of color. So it looks like a little flower. I got to do a bunch of varieties. There's only two that are doubles. My favorite one, obviously. But in various oranges. Let's hope this goes smoothly and that we can call it complete today um, so I can get going on everything else I need to work on. Install is luckily tomorrow night, so I think we're okay. <laughs> I hope so. Pray I don't have to do this a fourth time because I'm just playing myself at this point. Okay, let's go. Here's how I made the wheel granny squares. This will be the third style I've tried. I usually crochet on my lap, so it's a bit unnatural and slower when I film overhead like this. I would say that each square takes about 10 minutes to make in real time. These will fill out two tiers of the net. Again, I'll clip them on to see if I like the look. Setting a parameter to have a limited color palette makes the decision making a whole lot easier. I'm just going to commit to this <laughs> and just start sewing them in place. I can't keep debating. <laughs> now for the lower tier of the net. The oranges are alternating. From here I'm pretty over it and I just want to see this through. It's time to apply the spider granny section to the middle tier. I'll stitch them on as before. Now on my tabletop it's much easier to do this than on the ground. So I decided to add pom-poms to finish so I wouldn't have any loose ends. I cannot believe I finished it after all of that. So thank you so much for watching this video. It would mean the world to me if you could like and subscribe. 
to my channel. I know that growth on this platform is relatively slow and I will be patient and continue to do my thing. Moving forward, I might include some videos of just my general experience in the art and graphic design world. I feel like if I had this information when I was younger, it would make me feel better and more secure about my own choices and how things play out. I also feel like people don't really talk about these things for some reason. It's like kept quiet. Thanks again and until next time, bye.